Will Normie Osborne be able to rise to the occasion and help challenge Carnage as he conquers all of New York City? Well, let's hop into the pages of Red Goblin, issue number five, a continuation of Carnage Reigns, and find out together, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the issue, all of New York is going crazy. Cletus Casty somehow managed to mind meld into the city's neural network via the old Stark Industries building. Now he's popping up on people's phones and devices all over the place, driving them into murderous fits of rage. That's pretty damn bad on its own, but to make it worse, we actually see a return of those Carnage form guys from the previous issue. They're actively rooting on the Red God as he spills blood from door to door, burrow to burrow. In the middle of all of this, we of course have the Osborne family. Cletus rings up their house only to get Stanley Osborne, Normie's younger brother. I actually appreciate that the fake name that Cletus used to call the house was actually Flash Thompson. Stanley knows that he shouldn't talk to strangers, but unfortunately just a couple seconds on the phone with Cletus is enough to drive him to Michael Myers' levels of savagery. I mean, Michael Myers the slasher, not the actor. Luckily for everyone involved, Stanley's brother Normie is on the case and is able to stop his younger brother from turning them both into orphans. It's clear as the new Red Goblin, Normie, and Rascal can feel a disturbance in the symbiote force. In fact, Rascal is absolutely terrified once he realizes that they're dealing with carnage, and Cletus can even recognize Rascal as a long lost lost part of himself. Now, Normie is still very much a child, but even he knows he can't just sit by while the city eats itself, and as such, he decides to lock Stanley in a closet and swing on into action. What about his mother, Liz? Ah, well, you know, it's self-care Sunday, so she'll be busy for the next two hours at least. In the streets below, we see Taskmaster Hightail and Lady Electra of the Cape Killers doing their best to fight the mob. Also, despite being called the Cape Killers, their boss, Agent Gao, has gone out of her way to make sure that all of them agree not to actually kill any of the innocent people under Carnage's control right now. Seriously, that name, the Cape Killers, only gets sillier and sillier as time goes on. Only one of them has a cape, and now they don't even kill people. Just flagrant false advertising. You may notice the Cape Killers are actively down a member, as Scorpion is still at the mercy of the giant kaiju-sized Carnage left behind at the fight for Stark Industries. Cletus takes this opportunity to gloat to Gargan, villain to villain, saying that this is probably one of his his greatest plans to date. He's opened up the murderous intent in the hearts of every man, woman, and child across New York City, and obviously he doesn't plan on stopping there. Scorpion is almost killed by Carnage for like the second or third time since this storyline began, but luckily Gargan is saved at the last second by Agent Gao, who's actually getting in the field and actually saving her agents for a change. <laughs> Do wonders never cease. Gao also made the oh-so-important call to Fei Long, the brand new head of Stark Enterprises. Cletus is new Carnage form, after all, is powered by an arc reactor, so if they're going to take him down, they might very well need to fight fire with fire, but more on that at the end. Normie as Red Goblin makes the scene to do his best to try and help out amid all the chaos. It's during the fighting he actually comes face to face with Miles Morales Spider-Man, and you know what? He's actually starstruck right away. Obviously, as an Osborne, Normie has very complicated feelings when it comes to Spider-Man, but he's always liked Miles because he's a legacy that made good, where in his family, everyone who ever took up the goblin mantle ended up either evil or dead or most likely both. In fact, continuing with the ongoing story thread of Normie not even sure if he wants to take up the Red Goblin name for himself, Miles asks him who he is, and Normie essentially goes, you know what, I'm still working on that. Together, Normie and Miles actually join forces and manage to do battle with Kenneth Neely, Carnage's toady who was turned into a crazy half-symbiote, half-Iron Man drone at the end of the previous issue. The fight is a difficult uphill battle, not helped at all by the fact that Kenneth doesn't seem to actively want to be saved. Together, our heroes are able to get the old Iron Man mask off his face, but it's still not enough. Ultimately, in the end, Red Goblin happens to save the day when Rascal ends up absorbing the rest of the leftover Carnage goo, a power I'm pretty sure even he didn't know he had until right now. Just when it looks like the battle is actually turning in Red Goblin and Spider-Man's favor, Cletus ends up absolutely freaking out. Turns out he's one of those guys who hates it when he has his stuff touched. And while before he only seemed interested in unchecked chaos and destruction in the city, now Carnage manages to point all of his zombies right at Miles and Normie. Our heroes can't kill these perfectly innocent people under the thrall of Cletus, but oh boy, are they certainly gonna try and kill them as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Red Goblin issue number seven, everyone, and overall I thought it was alright. I think one of the biggest problems new comic series like this can get themselves into is when they instantly jump into an event and Lord 
knows five issues in. It's probably too early for Red Goblin to be crossing over with other books. But you know what? All the credit in the world to the creative team on this one because they kind of make it work. Rascal having his own visceral reaction to seeing Carnage again is pretty interesting, as is the revelation that he can seemingly absorb leftover Carnage drone parts, something that I'm sure will end up being really important later on in this series. Making Normie a mild Spider-Man fan is also a rather interesting and unexpected piece of characterization. I hope they carry that further. I like the idea of him fanboying. Similarly, I really wasn't expecting Fay Long and the Iron Sentinels and everything that's happening over in the X-Men books and the Iron Man books to actually be as influential here as they are, but I'm actually glad they are. It's one of those stories that rewards you for reading lots of different books at Marvel, and I really do feel rewarded. I will admit Carnage's big plan to sow seeds of chaos and death and destruction and bringing out the darkest impulses in people kind of feels a little been there, done that. But I guess the whole point of Ram V's Carnage series is that Cletus lacks imagination and vision, which is why the suit actually left him in the first place to try and become a god elsewhere, so it tracks, even if it is a little bit boring. Overall, I'd give this one a 7 out of 10. I don't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the Carnage issue that preceded this one. It does have the unfortunate position of kind of being the middle child of this event, but they certainly plant some interesting story seeds that I'm hoping they harvest later on down the line. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye